Hey, I'm Crompwell, and today I'm going to show you a sort of intermediate workflow for remeshing a mesh that's been output by 3D photogrammetry software. In this case particularly, I've used Meshroom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that model into Blender. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup, duplicate it, create a simplified version of the model, and reproject the textures back onto the new version to simplify everything down. So uh, this video I'm going to go a little bit faster, and I'm not really going to explain all of the things that I'm doing. I'm going to assume that you have some basic understanding of 3D and some basic understanding of the user interface of Blender, and we can go from there. And you can just follow along with some of these steps as I go a little bit faster through the process. If you'd like to go slower, I have a beginner's video which kind of explains more of the topics of 3D and how to get your bearings about you inside of Blender. I'll link that in the description. You're more than welcome to follow that if you need to go at a slower pace or if you've never worked in 3D before. Now, um, I should make mention that I'm using Blender version 2.81. I should say that you might want to use this version along with me, or perhaps version 2.80, um, but you'll probably get the best results if you kind of follow along. So I will kind of narrate what I'm doing, but I'm going to move quite a bit faster and I'm not going to explain everything. So really quickly, let's just make sure that I have my screencast keys, and I don't for some reason. Let's see if those are installed here. Let's make sure, okay. <clears throat> Boy. There we go, screencast keys, let's set this up real quick. This should be fine, and I'll make this a size of 45. All right, so let's get the screencast keys up and running so that those of you who wanna know what I'm pressing can know what I'm pressing. There you go. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna start by importing the model, so I'm just gonna go import Wavefront OBJ. I'm gonna locate my file, which is of course gonna be in my texturing folder, which is here. So this is gonna take a second to import. Shouldn't take that long though. All right, so once the model shows up, I happen to know that it's offset from the center. Um, so I need to get this in the center. So I'm just going to set my origin to the origin of the geometry. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna zero out these values to get it back in the center. I'm gonna grab it from a front view. I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. We'll apply that rotation and I'll just rotate it on the Z and apply that rotation and move it up and apply that location. And now I need to do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm gonna go into wireframe mode and I'm gonna tab in here. I'm just gonna grab the select lasso and I'm just gonna roughly grab parts of this model and just kind of start deleting things that I know are not necessary. So this is all stuff that I've covered in class before. If you're one of my students and you have a somewhat firm command on uh, 3D and you wanna go a little bit faster. So I've definitely already done all of this in class and showed this to you. And so uh, <clears throat> feel free to just follow along or to apply this to your own model. Obviously yours is going to vary slightly from mine because you'll likely have a, a different subject. So I'm just kind of cleaning up some of this stuff. Not a whole lot to see here, not a whole lot to talk about. I'm just gonna make this real simple here. And honestly, I, I could probably be a little more loose with this because the remeshing process is going to take care of a lot of this for me. I happen to know that this area right here is a little black cup top that was used to prop up this, um, this plushy model. And I think that should roughly be okay. Let me do a real quick check. Material preview. Give it a second to load in. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, we've gotten mo rid of most of the stuff that we don't want. Um, there's a little bit of this hand here that I kind of want to get rid of. So let's kind of get rid of this little chunk right there. And that should be okay. And I have to say, uh, by comparison to what I was doing in the long-winded video, this is definitely moving a lot faster. So I'm going to pop into sculpting mode. Um, just really quickly, and I'm just going to start to soften up some of these harder parts. I'm going to turn off my X symmetry, I don't need that on. And really, I'm just looking at parts of the the ears and all the, other, all the rest of the, the plushy body that needs to be kind of softened out. There's also this big point spike that goes inward here. It's kind of a pain, so... Let's just kind of soften this. I want to inflate the edge of this ear, so I'm using the I key to switch to my inflate brush. You can also find it over here, just to kind of simplify some of these shapes and give the, the form back there. And I don't want to 
go too crazy. I'm gonna smooth all this stuff out. Smooth all this stuff out. Now, I know there's a big hole in the top of this mesh, and that's fine. Uh, what's ultimately going to happen is that the remesh modifier is gonna fix up a lot of that nastiness for us. And then we're going to have to kind of texture paint it back in a into place later on, and that's fine. Um, that's kind of to be expected. Sometimes photogrammetry puts out kind of a rough mesh, and that's all right, so not nothing to worry about there. Let's kind of smooth this out back here. Oops, let me do that. Get rid of some of this jagged nonsense over here. Smooth out this foot a bit. And that's fine. Smooth out this foot a bit. It's a little bit weird here, so we're and inflate it and then smooth it and in fact I'm actually going to inflate this because I think the remesh modifier will do a good job of uh, helping us to kind of fix some of these self intrusions and stuff like this so it, this is fine kind of inflate this here smooth out some of this stuff and I think that should mostly be good I know I'm kind of going quickly through this and just kind of ignoring and glossing over some of the uh, some of these problems with geometry, I think it should be fine. Um, I'm not looking to recreate this with the highest level of fidelity because I want this to run quickly in a game engine. And so uh, really we're going to use the texture to kind of supply all of the tactile um, data to us or the tactile appearing data to us or tactile appearance, whatever you want to call it. So uh, we can actually kind of smooth off a lot of this geometry and kind of get away with leaving it kind of rough because we're going to decimate it and remesh and decimate it anyways. So I think that's fine. So I'm going to call this one original. So I know which one I'm looking at. Let's also collapse these side menus. And then we're going to duplicate this, right click, and then we're going to call this one bake. And I need to clear out the extra materials on here. So with my bake select, I'm just going to delete all these materials. And there's that. We'll create a new one. Uh, we want this to be a diffuse BSDF. And we're going to call this one bake. Okay, I'm just going to give it a different color so that it kind of sticks out. And then what I need to do is I need to throw some modifiers on this. So first we're going to use the remesh modifier. And that's, of course, going to mess some things up. So switch the mode to smooth. And I'm going to switch the octree depth to about five or six. I want to say six probably would make sense. And I'll turn on smooth shading as well just to remove that stuff for later. And now I kind of want to inflate this thing. So let's grab this. And then we're going to Alt-S all those points to kind of inflate it out a bit. And let's see, that looks good. Uh, I'm gonna throw another remesh modifier on it just to kind of fix some of those problems. And we'll make an octree depth of six with not sharp, but smooth. There we go. So that just kind of fixed some of those intersections on the arm pieces. And then at this point, I want to, I'm gonna grab some of my sculpting brush and I'm just gonna, actually, you know, I don't even need to cause that's fine. Now that I examine it, that should be perfectly fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decimate this thing. So I'm going to decimate it. We're going to use planar, and I'm going to say UV. And let's put on wireframe so I can see what it's doing. And let's kind of crank this angle up. Like, I don't want to go too far, but I do want to have this simplified. So kind of crank that up there. I think that should be okay. Hit apply, and then we're just gonna triangulate this. So there we go, triangulate, and that should be fine. Um, and then we're gonna eventually decimate this even further. So actually, let me decimate this right now and see what it looks like. So that's roughly looking like I want it to look. And we're already down at around uh, about a thousand verts. I could probably go a little bit lower. Let's get it down at around like 900, maybe even lower than that. Uh, 600 verts, can we get away with that? Yeah, I think we can. All right, nice, let's do it. Apply that. And then of course we're going to make a real mess of our UVs. So we're just gonna select this and say Smart Project UVs, and do that, okay. And then of course now we need to go and create the texture for this. So we're gonna go into our shader and I'm just gonna do Shift A and create an image texture. 
I'm going to pop this in here and hit new, and then we're just going to call this bake, turn off alpha because we don't need that extra data, and we want a 1024 by 1024. So now we basically just need to bake the model. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is select this, alt select that, or uh, make sure that this is selected and this is active, and then select this, this uh, new image texture that we've selected here and then I'm just going to switch my engine over to cycles and over to GPU compute device and I'm just going to make sure that I'm baking the diffuse because I don't really care about all the rest of this data so select it to active and color and we're just going to hit uh, bake uh, no I need to go hold on no I don't want to bake from multi res okay there we go and okay, so this is gonna go. Hopefully it'll bake without a problem. It should go relatively quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so now I can turn off original and I can plop this here. And there we go, we've got our Pikachu with our materials on it. So I'm gonna go into texture painting now and I'm gonna move, still moving pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> so just going to grab a color close to the top here, set up a little bit of a larger brush, set this down at like maybe 0.6, and just begin to paint in some of this texture at the top of Pikachu's head, and kind of get that in on the ears as well. And I'm just kind of like brushing this in over some of that missing texture data, and then I can come in here and kind of grab some of these colors here as well, just to try to mix it in a little bit better. Let's go back and uh, grab this color here, do the same thing. And I'm just gonna do the top here just to save time. Obviously I would spend more time on this if I really wanted to make this pretty and beautiful and wonderful. I'm just gonna kind of approximate this whole thing. I would also change the fallout of the brush or fall off of the brush, probably something like this, just to give it more of a harsh edge. Yeah, like that. Oops, let's make sure I'm not overlapping the geometry in a weird way. Just close that up. Okay. There we go. That's looking pretty all right. Obviously, I could go back and clean up some of that. It's not that big a deal, though. Something like this. I don't know, and then I take a couple passes at that to kind of really clear it up. But more or less, this is the same result that I produced in that ridiculous two hour long video, except this time I didn't take so much time to like explain everything. So I'm just gonna save this. I'm just gonna say save as go to my desktop and I'm gonna call this bake2 since this is the second. Actually, no, I'll call it bake because I put the other one in an archive, so that's fine. So now I have that image texture there. I can delete this original up here, so let's just delete that. Let me check out my orphan data. So I had a mesh, I had that textured mesh. So let's just delete this whole textured, extra textured mesh there because I don't want that getting packed into my model. And so now I have this really cool simplified Pikachu with a 1024 by 1024 texture, all baked onto one material called bake. And there we go, that's really that simple. So I'm just gonna go file, save as, I'm gonna call this thing Pika. And uh, one of the unfortunate things about using Blender 2.81, I'm gonna pack all my files in my Blender. It packs seven files, why did it pack seven files? Let me go double check this and see what the problem is. Um, for some reason, it keeps these image files, and I don't know why. I really don't, for the life of me, know how I can prevent it from doing this, because it's been a number of times now I've gone and deleted all that orphan data, and uh, I don't I don't want these packed in here. So remove this from the pack. Let's remove that. I thought I got it this time because I, I had to do this in the other video too, and it's really annoying. So I don't know, there's something going on where for some reason Blender, for the life of me, I can't understand why it insists on keeping this orphan data even though I've tried so many times to delete it. Oh, I screwed up my bake texture, I think. No, my bake texture's there, so uh, what's the problem? Oh, I think it was the UV, I think I screwed up the UV layout. Yeah, I screwed up the UV layout. 
There we go. Okay, so in the process of uh, unpacking those other materials, I screwed up the UV layout. Anyhow, we're down to 635 verts with one image texture on one material, so I'm almost completely certain that this is going to be small enough for us to not even have to worry about um, file size at this point. So images, here we go. Uh, nope. So let's get rid of all of these materials here. Let's just delete these. And the textures as well. And maybe that'll help me. There we go. So let's save this. Let's go file, external data pack, home, dot blend. No files, extra file. Okay, so yeah, there we go. So all those files should be missing now. It should literally just be this one texture. That was a little bit of an annoying uh, backtrack to have to delete all those or try to unpack them, but whatever. It's all saved into one now. Now, if you're using uh, version 2.80 and you followed along the steps, I know I kind of went quickly through that. Um, when you pack the image texture into uh, Blender, it should include it when you upload this online. When I go to upload this online, this most likely won't include it because we're using version 2.81. So we'll take a look at that. I'm gonna pause the video now and I'm going to open up Sketchfab and we're gonna take a look at the process of uploading this real quickly. All right, I'm in Sketchfab. I've already hit the upload button, assuming that you've already created an account and verified it and all that fun stuff. I'm gonna hit browse. I'm gonna look for this blend file, which is at 3.7 megabytes, which is actually pretty great. And I'm gonna hit continue. We're gonna call this thing Pika. We're just gonna call this description. So assuming that you're gonna give me a description of your model, if you're one of my students who is turning this into me for a grade, by the way. And so this is going to process automatically. And I'm going to walk you through some of these settings here. All right, so like I predicted, this came in as a white model. And I truly honestly believe that this is because I'm using version 2.81 of Blender. When I use version 2.80 in the labs, it seems to include the texture that I packed into the file. And it works really well. So the way to rectify this, if you run into this problem, is go to the 3D settings. Go to the Material tab right over here, find your Base Color option, click this open, hit Texture, Import Textures, find that texture which is called Bake and use that texture. You can see now we've got it. Turn off Metalness and Specular because you don't need them and leave the Roughness value alone. Head back to the Scene option and go to Shading and turn it from Lit to Shadeless. And there we go, we got our Pikachu, just the same way we were looking at it in Blender. Of course, the thing that I like to do is I like to add ground shadows on Baked AO, and this will take some time to render, but it'll basically put a little shadow beneath Pikachu's feet. I'm also going to add a, a background just to give some color to the environment behind. And I don't know, maybe we'll pick something. Do we have anything lush and green or, uh, I'm not really feeling that one. Let's do this one. I think that'll work. And I can change the brightness and the orientation just to kind of make it fit the way I want it to look. All right, so there we go. We've got our Pikachu model uploaded into Sketchfab. It's very low poly. It'll run in VR. It'll run in a game engine. You could use this as some sort of static mesh prop that can be picked up and examined or some sort of set dressing for the environment. And all you have to do now is hit the publish button, if you're one of my students, and send me the link for me to examine your work and assign you a grade. Um, I will also give you some <clears throat> a little bit of written feedback and so you have a better idea of some of the things you did right and some of the things you could have done a little better perhaps and uh, I will look I look forward to seeing you all in class and answering any questions you may have about this project. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I know I went a bit fast. This is more of an intermediate workflow that assumes you have some 3D understanding but I hope it helped you out nonetheless and I, I want to thank you for watching the video and sticking with it till the end and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care and I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving.